So the X Defiant world is the wild, wild west lately, with what appears to be details pushing closer to launch, insider reports, and leaks of all things. So today I wanted to kind of wrap things up for you and keep you in the loop with both the game details that have come out recently, while also sharing a bit of some unfortunate side of the news here today. So we're breaking it all down for you. So let me know your thoughts as we go along. Drop a like if you enjoy the video or you enjoy the coverage and consider subscribing for more X Defiant news and content along with other FPS coverage. We'd love to have you in the community. And also I've been posting more shorts here on the channel. You might've noticed that, but I'm also posting them over on TikTok as well. So if you'd like to follow over there, we'd love to have you link in the description below. But for now, let's get into it. So these leaks, we're talking about things like the founders editions of the game, some details about maps and future seasons upcoming, but this information coming through an account called TX Limited and with sourcing from UB Frax. Frax being an account we talked about recently that has validity behind it as well. So apparently we'll see a founders edition of the game and not just one, but a couple actually. A standard founders edition, a founders elite edition, and a founders pack ultimate. Now, none of these are required for purchase. The game will still be free to play for anyone who wants to, but it seems like it's these versions that will kind of be like rolled in with starter packs to the game, but also guaranteeing you and almost like paying up front for future content as well. Kind of like what we see with the different editions of Call of Duty, how some of them will include like the battle pass for season one in years upcoming. But this time around, the founders editions of X Defiant look to offer quick boosts, offering skins, player cards, faction access, X coins or the in-game currency, boosters, and again, in some cases, the battle pass access and things like that. So breaking these down, the standard founders edition apparently is going to be $20, which comes with the P90 for immediate unlock, the game over weapon skin for that P90, the dead sec faction immediately, something that will be available to unlock via challenge as well. It's not only accessible through this, but the dead sec faction seemingly coming with the operators of Denver, Gentry, and Lake. And you also get the game over skin for Gentry. You have the dead sec player card, a bronze player card. It'll come with 1000 X coins and the five time weapon booster, which I'm assuming is like weapon XP tokens. Then the founders elite edition is going to be $40, which comes with everything in the standard, that P90, the skins for the P90 and Gentry, the dead sec faction and bronze player card, along with 3000 X coins, 10 weapon XP boosters, again, assuming it's XP tokens for weaponry, and the Season Zero Premium Battle Pass. And the X Defiant Founders Ultimate Pack is going to be apparently $70, which comes with everything in Elite, that P90 weapon, the weapon skin, the Gentry skin, the Dead Sec Faction, player card, bronze player card, 3,000 X coins, 10 weapon XP boosters, the Premium Battle Pass, and 20 boosters. I'm assuming that's for Battle Pass boosters, like tokens in COD, and additional unlock tokens. Those, I'm assuming, are probably instant unlocks like the old prestige tokens back in the day for Call of Duty, where pre-orders and such, you'd be able to get an item or two of your choice on day one, regardless of if it was the last unlock in the entire game or something like that, you could unlock it permanently and it was also immune to resetting with a prestige mode. So I'm assuming that's going to be the same kind of thing here. You can jump in and unlock a weapon, attachment, ability, operator of your choice immediately with those. So honestly, those are kind of pricey. I don't really think that I'd find the Founders Ultimate for $70 to be worth it. And the other two really, again, come down to simply just, okay, you get some skins and everything like that, some boosters and some in-game currency to spend in the shop. Then it kind of breaks down to like the price point you'd actually pay for stuff in a comparable shop. That Elite Pack with the Battle Pass, kind of just like future-proofing that if you know you're going to play and use that Battle Pass, that it gives you a little bit more to work with there. But it's something that, again, we kind of knew this was coming and it's a way for Ubisoft to supplement some of the immediate costs here of a launch because it is a free to play title. But again, none of this at all is required. So just do with that information what you will. We also saw other leaks that indicated a sort of roadmap for the content coming long term as in future season themes, where apparently season one is going to be Rainbow Six themed, season two will be Far Cry New Dawn themed, season three will be Assassin's Creed themed, and season four will be Ghost Recon themed. Personally, I think that is a lot of cool potential in terms of integrating the IPs into X Defiant. And honestly, there's so much cool potential in that gameplay element, not just like in cosmetics and stuff like that, that could be worked into each of those as well. Each have such a rich pool of characters and abilities that could bring unique elements to the upcoming X Defiant seasons. So I'm curious to see what comes of that and how the timeline will work out for year one, whenever that may end up kicking off. But additionally, there's apparently a new map based on Far Cry New Dawn that was revealed called Waterfront and one that was Ski Resort 
report, there was another leaked map as well. Those ones, honestly, I didn't even get to see. Ubisoft was really quick with those takedowns. And beyond that, the account was posting a bunch of previews of weapon skins and cosmetics that all look pretty cool. And to this point of recording it, they haven't been taken down yet. I assume that's gonna be coming shortly. So if you guys would like to check those out, the link is in the description below to that account as well. And as a reference as to why this is something that you should at least consider with the future of X Defiant and not just disregard is that that account Frax, as we mentioned, got hit with a DMCA takedown. TX Limited ended up having a couple of things taken down as well. So it's one of those things that they are being hit with copyright takedowns, meaning they are legitimate and Ubisoft owns that intellectual property. Otherwise, well, they're misusing copyright laws. And I kind of feel like with the problems that could open up at a larger sort of legal standpoint, I don't think Ubisoft would be taking down stuff that isn't theirs. So interesting details for sure. But here's where we kind of have to amend the video. Up until a few hours ago, this video was actually ready to go. But now comes the hard part with gaming that I'd love to just talk about the leaks and the optimistic what ifs of the future, but it'd be a disservice not to mention the new information as well, even if it is unfortunate. But we ended up seeing a report from Tom Henderson earlier today entitled Behind X Defiance Toxic Work Culture Crunch and Years of Delay. In this article, it's alleged in a sort of elevator pitch condensed format here because it is a rather large article. In the progressing time frame from when X Defiant dropped the Tom Clancy's tag in the title, that was around in 2022, that there's been a growing number of people who have joined a boys club at the top here at Ubisoft, where issues that have persisted with the game have been brought up, but not acted upon among other things. But toxicity of any kind in a workplace like that can be demoralizing at the very least and stall development. So it's still something that I definitely still think holds tremendous weight and should be considered. The other interesting points of this article alleged a few things that the game's pitches or features for fixes or new content a lot of the times boil down to well how would call of duty do it and other things like the net code and stability still not being where the team would like it to be and while no catastrophic breakdowns of the systems have been seen like entire game crashes desync and bullet registry still appear to be issues with x defiant to date so there's a lot of stuff to break down there's a lot to digest with this report but kind of talking it point by point. On the topic of the workplace-related culture, frankly, I don't know game dev to have any additional insight than what's beyond this report, but I can only imagine that if true, which Tom's reports have been regularly correct, how frustrating as a lower end dev the holdups can be, resulting in more work or rapid fixes that could even break the game. Sort of like this snowball effect of crunch time, which it just gets harder and harder and harder. So can't imagine that. And even though my own personal dealings with some of the team at X Define have been nothing but pleasant, I have to assume that something has been stalling major features or progress than just what meets the eye or perhaps is the reasoning for what meets the eye. Like if the net code was something that was reportedly noted back in 2022, that's wild that it's still a continuing problem in 2024. Again, no network engineering background or anything like that, but like that a complete overhaul would have to be done two years later might point back to some of what was reported on there. Now on the topic of what could COD do, I think in some cases people won't mind this because they want that classic COD feel, but I I also don't know that it's necessarily a necessity, you know? Like creating its own unique identity is something that I think X Defiant has a really unique position to do. Integrating half a dozen to a dozen IPs, universes, and personalities almost immediately into their game. There's a whole playground of things that can work well that if you don't just stick to it, I think it'd be received equally as well. I don't think that as an alternative to COD for a lot of people, you have to do exactly what COD does, if that makes sense. And finally, the topic of netcode and stability. I'm hoping that things are progressing and we have enough, a good experience upcoming for the game as a player base, perhaps even offering us another play test to test those systems at scale. But for now, we just don't know. So there was a lot to unpack with that. And honestly, it's it's one of those things that is seemingly unpleasant to hear about, but it might be an unpleasant truth that we have to face. So that said, I'll leave you with the fact that Mark Rubin seemingly has hinted at an update coming directly from the X Defiant official accounts, potentially this week, as in maybe tomorrow or next. But beyond that, nothing official has been stated. So for now, that's where we're at here at this. We learned a bit about some gameplay related items here recently for X Defiant and also some more personable things here, some things that are the human end of this as well. So that's where I'll leave you. But for now, let me know your thoughts down below on any of this stuff. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to almost a single thing getting all things X Defiant and a ton of other FPS content here on the channel. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.